Well, um, thank you, Mr. Kijiro, for that kind introduction. Uh, perhaps the only thing I will add is that my son, uh, I have a son, not a daughter, who is uh, named after me, Budikarao Jr. And I have one wife who is a medical doctor and specializing in pediatrics. I wish I brought her, you know, today. Because her story actually, you know, uh, relates to most of you. Uh, this was this is somebody I met in first year when we registered for medicine and surgery at Romo campus. But not actually that. The story is that this is somebody who came from a poor family in Kitui, uh, scored very high marks, was admitted to Alliance Girls High School, paid the first fee uh, in um, from one, and from there she could not afford the fees. And so the teachers one day in staff room looked at themselves and said, we cannot release this young girl to go back home because she is very bright. And bright she was and hardworking she was because when we did our KCSE in 2002, she was the best girl at Alliance Girls High School. So for those of you... <laughs> For those of you in Alliance Girls, how many of you are in Bush? Bush guys? She was in a house. Okay, I have not, never seen the house, but I hear it's called Burns House. <laughs> okay? So, uh, but I know um, you are going to meet her one of these days. So thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to speak to you today. And when I was invited uh, to speak today, I was actually picturing myself one month before I did my KCSE in the year 2002. One of the things that happened when we were waiting for KCSE is that teachers went on strike. I hope they don't go on strike this time round. And there was a lot of uncertainty. And you know, I was trying to put myself in your shoes now that you are waiting for the exam, maybe in one month's time. In Tiani Nanzanga, Apokatikati, October. So that means you have roughly one month to do your revision. And that, you know, when I was preparing this uh, presentation, that's what I was thinking about. What is it, you know, uh, that you should do during these final days? Because actually these are final days. And actually I remembered what the Bible says. You know, I'm a Christian. And I remembered what the Bible says about the end and the beginning. And I remembered a verse that was written by one of the wisest men on earth. He is known as Solomon, who wrote that it is better the end of a thing than the beginning. Ni vizuri muisho wa kitu au wa jambo kuliko mwanzo. Are we together? So it's better that you are finishing. Actually you are in a better state than the people who are starting from one. I want us to start like that. And what Solomon was actually telling us is that we must be strong finishers. Those of you are going to score A plane. Those of you are going to score B. Those of you are going to score C plus. What is going to make all that difference is how you are going to finish. Why must you be a strong finisher? Because people will not remember anything else about you but how you finished. Tuko pamoja? Hakuna mtu atakumbuka kitu ulichofanya ila vile ulimalizia. I want to ask you, how many of you watched or heard about the World Cup? You want to ask you to come to the dunia. How many of you remember a player by the name Luis Suarez? What do you remember about him? Very well. Most of you remember Luis Suarez having beaten somebody. Isn't it? I want even to take you a little further, maybe when you were quite young. In 2006, there was another one called Zinedine Zidane. When I remember him, because I watched that World Cup, I remember he had batted another player. I forget that he was one of the best players of his generation. Are you together? Likewise, it means it does not matter which grade you scored in Form 1. Let's start even in Class 8. Which grade you scored in Class 8? In Form 1, in Form 2, in Form 3, and now in Form 4, even in the mocks. People will remember you by what you're going to score in your KCSC. Are you together? So I want you not to remember, you know, some of us might have scored a B, some of us might have scored an A, others might have scored a C or a C minus. 
but nobody will remember you by the grade you scored in your mocks. That's the thought I want to put in your head so that you can focus for the remaining one month. And while at it, while I'm just doing this introduction, I want to remind you about a principle that I always like. It's known as the Fudge Principle. How many of you know Alex Ferguson? Sir Alex Ferguson. You know I'm a football fan. Not much of a player. Me seem to a Jimzuri, but I'm a football fan. Let me, let, me, let me tell you about the Ferguson Principle. This man, whenever his team was playing, and you reach the 87th minute, even if the opposing team had scored two or three goals, you always had that lingering thought that his team was going to win. Are we together? No, I'm, yes. <laughs> now, here, the girls don't know which team. No, I got to make sure team in the man you. Ah, now you are new, you ain't going to that's the problem. No, I got to support for any losers. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking about Manchester United, but listen to the principle. He used to tell his players that not until the whistle goes down, okay, not until you hear the whistle, the game is not over. Are you together? That means that if you are a Manchester United player and the game has reached the seven minutes, and even if there are three minutes remaining, that is enough time to score three or more goals. And therefore, his players would come into the field with that attitude that you don't despair until the end. Am I ringing a bell somewhere? Are there some of you who have despaired before the end? Unajua ujandika physics, lakini mesha give up ukasema physics, hiyo si yangu. Ujandika mathematics, but you already despaired. Who told you that even a single day cannot make a difference? Are you together? We have stories of people who scored a D plus in a mock and B plus in KCSE. And so when I talk to you, I'm talking to you from experience. Having spoken to students many, many, many places, I've interacted with some of them. Therefore, if you are here, you have one month going, uh, you know, to go, to go to your exam, to write your exam, please remember do not despair until the end. I'm going to tell you how. You know, this is just an introduction I'm laying, eh? You must start with that. So, what would Sir Alex Ferguson do to make his players not despair until the last minute? He would teach his you know, uh, players every time during training to apply what was known as last minute pressure. He would tell them, leave alone the first half, or whichever goals were scored. Leave alone the first 30 minutes of the second half. What matters is how you're going to finish this game. Or in other words, what matters is what Rudisha or as the hockey prop would call the last kick. You know, I was watching a race a few days ago, and Rudisha would kick from the beginning, and one Botswanian boy kicked in the last 50 meters and won the race. I tell you, if you listen to all the news reports, during the first lap, Rudisha was number one. During the second, 75% of the lap, Rudisha was number one. Everybody was saying Nigel Amos was the best. He beat Rudisha. Are you together? So today we are going to learn how to apply last minute pressure. Because most of the time, last minute pressure does pay off. Of course, there are some of you who are doing well. As I'm sure actually most of you. Like me, there are some of you who have scored an A in the most, and you have your thoughts in order. What I'm telling you is that there is always room for improvement. Are you together? And from my experience, always, whatever you get in your mocks, as long as you're in the right state of mind, you always score higher in your KCSE. Not unless you despair, not unless you sit on your laurels and start celebrating, always, if you score a B plus in the mocks, and you apply this last minute pressure in your, you know, in your last month or two, most of the time you find yourself in the A minus or A bracket. Are you together? So I am not only speaking to the people who have, who have had a bad form, form four. I'm speaking to everybody that there is room for improvement. You haven't gotten 100%, you can still improve. But before I go to that, let us ask ourselves, what are the challenges 
that candidate face, like you now, what are the challenges that you are facing? Or what are the things that are going through your head? And I can tell you these things are, co are constant in every student. Look at yourself here. Look at the uh, 300,000 who are not here today. All of you, the same thoughts are going through your head. Number one is that I have not covered everything. Is that true? Sijamaliza, ata physics, kuna topic za form 2, sijui, kuna za form 3, ata biology, kuna topic sijui, that is a thought. And can I tell you something? All scholars, all who, all who, always think like that. I've never seen somebody went to an exam, akasema, mimi nimefika na nimesoma kila kitu. Always there's that feeling that you could have done more. I want to tell you even if you feel like that, as you go through the, you know, this revision period, don't think you are alone. You are, all of you, that's what you'll be thinking. The second one is that I am inadequate. By the way, not all of you think they are inadequate. But some of you think they are inadequate. Are you together? But I want you to look at your neighbor. Hey, Angalia Is there any inadequacy you are seeing? Kuna kitu naona hana? As far as writing the exam is concerned? Hata wale awana mpono wanaandika na mugu, sivyo? Hata wale awana macho bando kuna braille, isn't it? So there is no inadequacy. Actually, inadequacy is what you tell yourself. Hakuna kitu kibaya kuliko... You see, you know, if you read military history, there is nothing as bad as when an army goes to war, already they, are, they know they're inadequate. In the whole history of military, wakati jeshi wanapoenda kwa vita, hata kama mnaenda, mnapigana na mishale na wale wengine wako na mabom na magrunet, you always think you're going to win, isn't it? That's the principle of war. Na kama mnaenda, and you are 10 soldiers, and one of you starts saying that, hey, hapa tutachapwa, military law says that you shoot in them. Isn't it? Because he is reducing or decreasing the morale of the team. You know, when Israel has been fighting Palestine a few days ago, kuna, there, is an, a, a, there is an order called the Habidan order that if a soldier is abducted, that's one, or two, if a soldier gives up in the front line, he should die. So a soldier giving up is shot then, or if he's abducted, kill him plus the abductors instead of him going and you're told to give something in return so that he's released. Are we together? Therefore, that thing of inadequacy, please remember that we're in high school by right. Kuna mtu hapa alipelekwa high school akaenda watazi wakapiga au guardian wakapiga magoti au equity group foundation ikapiga magoti the upewe admission. So you want yourself a place. You deserve it, isn't it? You read your KCP and the pass. All of you, you pass. Actually, I don't know anybody here who scored less than, I think, 300, 350 marks. Some of you, 400. That means you deserve, you are adequate, and you are here because you can make it. Tuko pamoja. So for those of you who are thinking, you know, uh, Mimi, you know when we were in high school, we used to think, wala wako alliance au sarehe, dio upita. Until I came, when the results were being announced, you know, those guys who were there, they were telling me, they looked at the, you know, the person with the highest performance index, they realized the mean is, the, you know, the, that number, the index did not start with a four zero zero zero. how many of you are in Sarai? Is that your index number? Four with many, many zeros. They realized, no, see you. Then they looked at that, ah, it's not for Alliance. Then they looked at that, no, it doesn't look like for near high school. They looked at that, no, it doesn't look like for Pagani girls. They realized it was for a school in Meru, which was not even ranked among the top 100. I can tell you, if I thought I was inadequate, today I would not be here speaking to you. Sasawa? So it does not matter the school you are in. You are there by right. I believe your, you know, your teachers have done a good job and you have done your part of the job. What is remaining is for you to, is to stand in position and proclaim your grade. Look at your neighbor and tell them, proclaim your, your grade. Very well. The third thing that, one of the that, the, you know, the third challenge that faces candidates is that I am unlucky. You know, we think sometimes passing is a matter of luck. By the way, let me tell you one thing. 
kupita start at the age but to some extent can be due to luck because your choices are restricted between a and d trivial you know how many of you have done probability probability in mathematics all of you isn't it that means the probability of getting a correct answer between a and d is how many how, how, how what percentage a quarter 25 percent that means actually theoretically you can get 25 percent in your kcp without doing anything like in sasa angalia high school you get a blank page with a question surely luck cannot play any role there it must be you who knows what you're being asked and you writing it there isn't it so luck in this year class 8 is you well that it's kile unajua the fourth thing that i know is facing you is pressure of expectation still i'm to unexpect with it starting with your guardians and parents your friends your sponsor kila mtu anataka ufanye nini and sometimes that pressure can weigh on our shoulders and we we feel it quite heavy but i want to tell you that one of the things that you must do during this one month is that you must actually relax and the final challenge that i'm going to discuss is actually poor or discouraging mock results You know we are you know all, all the time we, we you know every time we are, we are sitting you know to do any subject we remember this is the subject that is called 40% and even before you start reading you shall funga akili yako and you know you are a 40% student Now I mean all these challenges today I want us to ask how can we solve these challenges and finally then I ask how can we revise our cases is what I was calling last minute pressure But before I do that let me give you a one disclaimer called a disclaimer on disclamation that there's nothing that I'm going to tell you which is new I want to illustrate this by telling you a story or giving you you know an analogy Are you ready to receive it Can you uh, picture the pool the swimming pool does is there a swimming pool in this place Ah okay when you finish this go and look at it or a fish pond is there one apa kuna fish pond ah okay now let me give you the analogy there are two young fish who are swimming in a pool or a pond one early morning enjoying the early morning swim and the sun of course is it's shining the sun is shining and as they are swimming along you can picture them can you they meet an older fish a bigger fish and the fish looks at them and the bigger one looks at them and asks them hey boys how is your morning of course they don't uh, answer they continue swimming and then he looks at them again and asks them boys how is the water this morning so they continue swimming they continue swimming when they swim for like 100 meters they look at each other and one of them asks the other by the way what the hell is water okay my analogy ends there <laughs> that means these fish have been swimming in water but they don't know what water is tuko pamoja are we together so meaning that we actually don't take note of the most obvious things in our lives tuko pamoja and that's what i'm going to be saying this day i'm going to tell you the obvious things in our lives or in your lives as students So number one, I miss these challenges. This is what you must do. Number one, you must be resilient. Tell your neighbor resilience. Let me tell you what resilience is. When we were doing physics in high school, one of our physics teachers would take the ruler, the one meter ruler, and he would bend the ruler, and all of us would be, you know, waiting for the ruler to break. and he would continue bending it and 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 when he is almost the hands are almost joining the ruler would crack you know then he would measure and tell us you can see how resilient the material is what is resilience resilience is the ability to return to your original state after a challenge to go pamoja to return to the original state after i know some of us have been challenged Some of us have not even returned to that state. 
but you must be resilient. You must stand up. Ukipata no kupande u, unamka, unajaribu tena, you know, kukazana, unapata another knock. You know, kwa hile life yote ni mesoma about, you know, and I've spoken to many professionals, many, many places. I can tell you, next next week, I'll be in a place called Kinshasa, Congo, to speak to a group of students. And I can tell you, I've been to almost all the continents in this world. Na sijoi pata, even one academic, you are also academic, isn't it? Who has gone through the course without failing once? Without failing? Ukienda hata kwa wale waliito the most brilliant people, hata Albert Einstein, hata Barack Obama, you read their stories, or they tell you their stories, kuna siku moja alianguka. Sawa, sawa. Hata Nelson Mandela, kuna siku moja alifanya nini? Hata we, kuna siku moja, nani ajai anguka hapa? Mkono juu. Hata siku moja ujai pata, you know how your teacher calls you, anakuambia, no, 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 this is not good. Or you look and you're set at minutes of eight, you get assisted. Nani? Very few, isn't it? Very few, if any. Lakini, let, let me ask you, what is the difference between Obama, Einstein, Mandela, all those brilliant people, and some other people we don't know? Is that Obama, alipoanguka, akuka pale chini. He woke up, akasema, this is the mistake I made, this is what I will do next time. The same with all the people who made it. Are you together? The same with all the people who? But amongst all the people who made it, there are thousands who never made it. And perhaps who are doing better than even, even Obama. And what happened? Walianguka siku moja, wakasema mimi, this is my blessing. Even in high school, I saw many mathematics from one. Some one, 90%. Some two, 80%. Some three, 40%. When you start from two, wanakuambia mimi esabu, na mimi we don't see eye to eye. Hata uwe mwalimu wenyewe, akiniona, inapotea hiyo formula. And you know what? Kukuja form 4, they scored an E in form 4. And the question is, between this brain that was scoring a 90 and the brain that scored an E, do you think the brain changed? There was a very little change in the brain, if any. What changed are the perceptions and what information this person fed into his brain. Let me give you my personal example. When I joined high school, I was from the village. So even spoken English was a problem. Right? Written English was a problem. The first day, we were told, write a composition on your first day in high school. Were you told to write that one? Ah, things have not changed after all, yeah? The more things change, the more they remain the same, yeah? That composition, I got 4 out of 20. Because, you know, I was writing everything flat. You know, my first day in school, I came with my father with a tin box. I was as happy as a sister who has been married. The way we used to write in primary school, I told you, for you to have a good composition after every sentence, assimilate. <laughs> and so the teacher, you know, everything was printed in red. This is flat. This is inappropriate. 4 out of 20. And, you know, I looked and said, oh, English, English, English. And I would be performing well in mathematics and everything else, and very poorly in English. Until I reached form two, and there was a student called Rafo. Rafo, I'll never forget him. He's a manager in one of the top banks right now in the country. Rafo was from the city. And in the city, they used to write like they were writing novels. Right by the way, I've written a novel, yeah? So soon you can go to the bookshop and buy. I'll give you the title of the novel. So these days, I'm not very poor in English, after all. So I asked Rafo one day, Rafo, you know English a lot. Why don't I be writing compositions for you? You mark for me. Are you there? And every week I would write some compositions and you would mark for me. Can I tell you? By form four, I was doing better in compositions than Rafa. I don't even need to say. When we did our KCSE, I was the best in English in the country. Maybe let me, let, let me ask a question. When I got four out of 20, there were two options, isn't it? To give up and they say, I'm a Meru, English was not invented in Meru, now Ivo is in Isubwe, Sibio. You know people, if you know how to get English, I want to say it came by ship, it could have mainly. Sibio. Now that was, and actually, can I tell you, my, you know, most of you are my sisters and brothers, isn't it? Can I tell you, 
that first option is easier than the second option, isn't it? The option you have to give up. Eh? English, it was not invented in Meru after all. I give up. Eh? And I go to Rufo and get an E. That was the easier option. But there was another option that, you know, all these things are learned. There is nothing you are born with. Even this English is learned. Even the people who know English a lot have learned it. And that is the harder option. But just like the Bible says, the road to heaven is very narrow, isn't it? You can go this way, you can go this way, you can go with your eyes closed, because it is easy. How many of you are going to choose the easy option? How many of you are ready to bite the bullet? Can I see by a show of hands how many of you are taking the hard option? You see, all of you will be in the ELP program. If you do like that, you're going to score his and Mr. Kevin will have no option but to employ all of you. So you must be resilient. Number two, you must be personally organized. I'm going to say a little, uh, you know, uh, uh, a li uh, after a little while what personal organization is. But one of the things that you cannot take into the examination is personal disorganization. You have to be personally organized. Number three, and the more important, believe in yourself. Believe in your... Hey, bon, I want to hear from you. Believe in your... Again, believe in your... At the back, that overflow place. Believe in your... Let me give you an example of somebody who believes in himself. And I think some of you here have heard this story. I want to give you the story in the Bible of David and Goliath. You know, all on were against Goliath. How many of you have read that verse? How many of you know the story of David and Goliath? By a show of hands. Most of you do know. David was a small boy whose work was to sharpen his father's sheep in the wilderness. While Goliath was a soldier, okay, who had been trained and had a lot of experience in battle. He had won many battles, and actually we are told any time there would be a battle, when the, op the opponent saw Goliath, they would tremble. Most of the time the war would end even before it started, just by seeing Goliath. You know, when I was in the university, when I became the best in the first year, the degree I did is known as Bachelor of Science in Human Anatomy. For those of you who want to do medicine, human anatomy is the cause whereby you are given a body of a human being like you, you dissect from head to toe, and by the end of that, you know the body inside out. I can tell you, you have roughly about 300 muscles. Most of them are named in Latin, and I know them. You have 207 bones. Most of them are named in Latin, and I know them. You have thousands of blood vessels. Most of them are named in Latin, and I know them. Okay? So, human anatomy was teaching us how does the human body look like in the normal state. Now, let me tell you now the anatomy of Goliath. And this is from the Bible. His fingers. His what? The Bible says one, each one of them was at least 30 centimeters long. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know how many that you know how how, how big that centimeters are? Like that, that ruler you use, yeah. So finger moja ilikuwa kama ile ruler. This is the Bible saying. It's not me. You can go to the book of Samuel, uh, uh, Judges, chapter seventeen. His height, he was three meters tall. Do you know who is the? Tallest player in the Premier League, the English Premier League? Peter Couch? Do you know how tall he is? He is 191 centimeters. 1.91 meters. And you know the guy when he's playing, he is looking at the others. He can be doing like this to their hands. Yeah? Like in the Ujama, Alikwa, three meters tall. That's just him. I want you to take that mental picture. And the picture of David, who was maybe 150 centimeters. That's a half. You know, when we're talking of half, we are talking of my son, who is who reaches like here. Okay? So this is a, a David who is half the height of Goliath, and they are meeting to fight. And can I tell you the difference between the two? Goliath believed, David believed, but Goliath all this time, he kept convincing David 
how he was going to kill him actually the bible records walipokutana goliath alikuwa anaambia david you know hey you kijana how can you come to me with a sling you think i'm, I'm like mimi ni kama nyuni and you know all this time david was conserving his energy and he was convincing himself of course when they met you know who won isn't it so as case it comes it's like we are we are david in the midst of goliath but the way you win is by believing in yourself actually the bible says when goliath when david went to the king the king looked at him and was you know kijana unaweza enda kufight with a giant and david looked at him and said yes i am the one who is going to fight then he was told no at least wear some military clothes so that even if a spear is thrown it doesn't go through your heart and when he wore them he could not walk because they were very heavy is the bible which says so and they went believe in himself akaweka hizo nguo chini akasema i will go without any of them with only with a sling and that's why wherever i go i always tell students that if you have a giant here okay if you have a giant even case you see is a giant can i tell you why case is a giant because it is the most important exam you will ever do in your life some of you here will become engineers you know? some of you will become doctors isn't it some of you will become teachers isn't it some will become bankers what is it that divides you into those professions see the case you see video it's case you see which now kuna wale and i hope there's none here who won't even go to the university because of the case you see man so that's a giant but now the thing is if you have a giant here and you're here what would you rather do would you rather convince the giant that you're going to kill him or would you rather convince yourself sasa to convince giant most of the time giants are animals and they don't hear your language okay hata uki convince giant you're doing nothing the best thing you can do is to convince you is to convince you and so among you the students who are going to pass are the ones who have convinced themselves that they are going to succeed what else can you do i'm going to talk about something known as teamwork known as known as there's a print for use and this print is usually i usually say it like this tell me and i will remember 20% is that okay tell me and i will remember how much but listen to me and i will remember 80% that means when you hear you are likely to remember 20% it's called the 28 rule but when you say you are likely to remember how much 80% how many of you believe in that rule that's other wala i believe let me convince you <laughs> you know all of you have been listening to teachers isn't it everybody coming to teach unaketi hapo like a receptor ko eh usually we usually say at the ocean why it's salty because it receives and never gives out that's why it's salty eh hey, receptor ko you have receptors in medicine we call them receptors your work is just to catch knowledge and, and store it but when the exam comes can you release it how sure are you that you can release it the only way to be sure is actually to say it. is that okay and the only way to say it is to be in a team or a discussion group now let me tell you something that happens in discussion groups that people usually that make me worried is that even in the medical school when we, we form discussion groups people would say nitakuja hiyo discussion group you be ready i'll listen and i'll pass na mimi naenda nasoma i read everything when we come they sit i talk 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 when the exam comes i'm on top of them you know why it's because they have made themselves receptacles and that's what you should do when you form discussion groups i can assure you the person who says remembers 80% but the person who listens remembers 20% is that okay to form discussion groups when should you form them as early as next week is that okay as early as and when you form discussion groups make sure that you speak there whether you know everything or you know half it's better you know half and you are correct then you remember than going there to listen by the way i can tell you by listening to a discussion group even if it's a student who is saying 
there is nothing different that is being said than what the teacher has said. You call it wrong. Yes. And the other thing that I would like you to know is that you must manage your time wisely. I always use this rule. How many hours do you have in a day? 24 hours, isn't it? All of you will have 24 hours. How many hours should you sleep? Everywhere I go now, Lizango, as a doctor. You know, I did psychiatry. I was in Mazara Hospital for, I think, three months. You know, I'm doing psychology and psychiatry. People ask me, Dr. Tari, how many hours should I sleep? Can I tell you how many hours you should sleep? A normal person sleeps between six to eight hours. Between six to? But can I tell you how many most of you will sleep? Eight hours. How many hours? Actually, if I were you, come and mimi nige kuwa wewe, nige lala eight hours. Let me tell you what happens. When you're in school, if you look at your timetable, the time you're supposed to sleep and wake up, it's actually eight hours. But let me tell you what happens most of the time. You are taught for eight hours, you sleep for eight hours, then you have how many hours to yourself? In a 24-hour day? Eight hours, isn't it? These so eight hours, it's for you. If they are not for the teacher, they are not for your friends, they are yours for you to do your revision. Let me tell you what happens. Those eight hours, which are hours, we spend them playing, joking, running from place to place, and then the eight hours when we should be asleep, we, send them, we spend them reading. And then the eight hours when we should be in class, we, send, we spend them sleeping. Imagine I'm the teacher. Half of you, you know you can sleep with your eyes open, yeah? <laughs> sleep is a brain activity. It is stuck in your brain. So some of you might be asleep, but don't worry. So Mwalima go class eight hours, half of them you are asleep. Okay? Then the eight hours that you should be with yourself doing your work, doing your private study, you are joking in class, you are shouting on top of your, of your voice. Then the eight hours you should be sleeping, you are awake reading. Do, do you see those are mixed priorities? So when you open school next week, please. Make good use of your time. If we, we say you have that day, that means every day you have eight hours for your own work, that means you actually have 240 hours. Now tell me, what is it that you cannot do in 240 hours if you want? There is very little you cannot do, isn't it? You can do a lot in 240 hours. So please, when you are budgeting for your time for revision, make sure that you make use of your 240 hours and the hours for sleep, you do sleep. Good. Now I want to change course and go for and go to the last part of my presentation, how to revise for KCSC. But before I do that, I realize that most of you or some of you are falling asleep. So I want you to stand up. <laughs> While you're standing up, allow me as a doctor to explain to you how sleep comes in. Can I explain? Sleep comes like this. Sleep comes because your brain, your brain, the oxygen levels in your brain go down. And why do the oxygen levels go down? Because when you get tired, what is known as the respiratory drive, respiratory respiration, that's the lungs, huh? Respiratory drive goes down when you're tired, and therefore the amount of oxygen you inhale goes down, and therefore your brain activity goes down. Okay, so you are actually suffering from a condition we call hypoxia. Tell your neighbor hypoxia. And when you see people sleeping here, they are suffering from hypoxia because they have not been breathing in and out well. I, by the way, even when you are doing your exam. Some people who faint or they start shaking around, it's because of hypoxia, because they are taking shallow breath and therefore they are not breathing well. And so when you reach your exam, take a deep breath and get enough oxygen because it is free. The oxygen is free. So I want you to do that and get a good amount of oxygen into your lungs. Hey, now, I want us to do one exercise, wow. a simple exercise. Remember, I have only 15 minutes to go. A simple exercise. I want us to pick fruits. 
Can we pick fruit? So can you start by your hands up there? So I want us to start by picking one, two, three pineapples. I want a pineapples in a So I want us to do this, yeah? When I tell you we pick a certain fruit, pick according to where you put it in your farm, okay? So can we start again? I want us to pick bananas. One, two, three. Pineapples, watermelons, mangoes, bananas, watermelons, cabbages. Uh, okay, you can sit down. Now, now, I want to start by saying this, by giving a personal testimony of how I revised for, for my case. In my school, when when uh, we were doing our phone form, it happened that when we were in form three, we had a lot of disturbances. Students were going on strike after day, day after day. And so we never covered the form three syllabus in form three. We started covering it in form four. So when form four started, first day, form four, we were actually in physics and mathematics. I remember we started the first topic in form three in physics. And I'm telling you the truth. And so when KCSE started, we found that for mathematics, for physics, for chemistry, for biology, we had not covered the syllabus. And so people always ask, ask me, because some of those subjects are the best in the country. Did you cover the syllabus yourself? And I want to tell you sincerely that I did not. I did? I did not. This is what I did. At the beginning of Form 4, I told myself that if we will not have covered the syllabus, anything we have covered, I will be very good in it. But anything we have not covered, I will just leave it to faith. There are some things you have to leave to faith. That means during my revision time, I kept going from Form 1 to Form 3 many times. So that if a question came from what I have covered, Chances are, I would score 100%. So when KCSE came, of course, I met or found questions there that I had no clue about. What did I do with them? Because I had spent the whole year telling myself that I will capitalize on my strength. I would leave the question blank. But what we uncovered, I had 100% chances that I was getting everything. The thing is that this experiment actually worked. Because all the subjects I start, nine of them, I got a plane. All of them. Including those subjects, like chemistry, we, have on, we had only covered three topics in Form 4. How many topics? Three in Form 4. What is the moral of this thing? Is that it does not matter. Some of you, I know you're in a place whereby you are saying some things in Form 4 are not very clear. But can I tell you, when KCSE comes, what affects you is not what you don't know, it is what you know. So I want you to start asking yourself, what I know, do I know it well? Otherwise, during the vision, it is not good to neglect what you know for what you don't know. After all, revision means doing again what you have already done, isn't it? That means you cannot revise what you have not read. You cannot revise what you have not read. And so when I talk about revision for cases, I'm talking about what you have already read. That is what you must familiarize yourself with. So what you know is what counts more. Some of you will say, what I know, is it enough? I want to tell you from one, from two, from three, what is enough. Rather, even if you have covered only from two, it is better to enter the exam with this attitude that whatever I know is enough than entering there knowing that those Jakaba Kitu, Satan Ibianguka. It is like going to a battle and you have already been defeated. Are you together? Very good. So I want to encourage you to put strong emphasis on your strong areas. I remember what I, we said, being a strong finisher. So number one principle of being a strong finisher, put a strong emphasis on your strong areas. That means if you are very good in Form 2 work and Form 3, please, don't put it aside when you are revising so that you can do the topics that you have not covered. Is that okay? Do it. Do, if you have time, do even what you have not covered, but make sure this one you know. If a question is set from there, you are getting 100%.
who said KCSE is only from forward? Is there a rule written like that? Apana. KCSE comes from form 1, from form 2, from form 3, from form 4. And therefore, please, when you are revising, it does not mean you do form 4 work. It means you go back from form 1, familiarize with everything, but put a strong emphasis on your strong areas. But I would like to say this, that when you are putting an emphasis on your strong areas, you must do so across the subjects. So if you are strong in history, please, I'm not saying that if you are poor in mathematics, you don't read it. Is that okay? I'm saying even in mathematics, you are, there are areas you are good in, note them down, put an emphasis on them. There are areas you are poor in them, also read them. The second thing about being a strong finisher is that you must now realign your timetables or your private study with the exam timetable. By the way, there is no exam like biology. There is an exam like biology practical, isn't it? There is no exam like English. There is an exam like English literature, English paper one or composition. Am I speaking? And therefore, when you are revising for your exam, please, Break your timetable like that, so that when it's time for biology practical, it's time for biology practical. And you know, from the four years you've been in school, where biology practical is, or where it can be examined from. If it's English literature, you know what you need to read, to read for English literature. You know when you put your timetable English, some of us will read literature all the time and forget grammar, isn't it? Others will read composition all the time and forget literature. But I can tell you that balancing your timetable in that way will mean that all the papers you sit at least once a week, you are going to revise them. Is that okay? So that is one thing that you must do as soon as you get your private. Once you leave this place, please do that. When should you start revision? You should have started earlier on, isn't it? If you have not started, start now. Then, you must do what is known as Dara Personal Evaluation. Dara Personal? Dara Personal? Let me give you an example. How good do they be that you know all the mathematics there is to know, but when it comes to the day of the exam, you know all the questions, but you don't have the know-how to finish all the questions in the given time. That means you should have evaluated yourself and you know that I can write with this speed, I can drink with this speed, and therefore when I get to the exam room, I will finish everything that I'm supposed to do. Is that okay? That is personal evaluation. So when you're evaluating yourself, this is what you should know. What is your drinking speed? What is your calculating speed? What is your writing speed? Because you can read and know everything, but you're a slow writer. You get the exam, the exam should be done in two hours. You do by two hours, you have only done a quarter of the exam. I tell you, then if you are lucky like you, you cannot pass that exam, isn't it? And therefore, how well you're going to write that exam? It is you to determine now by doing your personal evaluation. If you are given a composition of 1,500 words, can you write that thing in 40 minutes? And how would you do that personal evaluation? That means during your revision, you must go through some papers that people have done, or the papers at your disposal, the ones you have, and they see whether you can finish them in the required time. I want to tell you, it is practice that makes perfect. The more you practice, the faster you'll become. The faster you, the more you practice, the more you'll be thinking faster, and the time you take to interpret a question, and they know the answer, will be shorter and shorter, the more you do more questions in that topic. Is that okay? Like in Ujjana Swali Kutoka Vectors, you take five minutes to even interpret what the examiner wants to ask. I tell you, you only have done a few questions and you hear time is over and in the exam, time is part of the exam. So you must, during your revision, you must evaluate yourself thoroughly. I remember when we were doing our mocks, I would finish. Despite the fact that we are not covering the syllabus, that those days we used to have mathematics, uh, section A, chapter 2 maths, Section B, 48 marks. That paper, I used to finish it in one and a half hours. All of it. I would choose my questions, the one I know, and most of the time I would be knowing everything except what we have covered, and within one and a half hours, I would finish, and they start doing the paper again. 
Can you do that in your case too? Some of you can, isn't it? But at least all of you should be able to finish, even in the two hours given. Is that okay? It is now to determine whether you're going to finish.